Again, welcome to the SRT 734 class. Uh, in these lectures, we're going to discuss about discrete probability distributions. So our main objective is to distinguish between discrete random variables and also continuous random variables. We're also going to learn how to construct a discrete probability distributions and its graph. Also, we're going to determine if a distribution is a probability distribution. Also, how to find the mean, variance, and standard deviation of a discrete probability distribution. Also, how to find the expected value of a discrete probability distribution. Again, the expected value and mean are the same. Also, the difference between a discrete random variable and also continuous random variable is that discrete random variable is based on counting how many flights were late today how many patients were cured today that's a discrete random variable we are counting continuous random variable will be based on measurement what is the average weight of the patients or what is the average uh, blood pressure of three patients or four patients so again, discrete random variable is based on counting, and then continuous random variable is based on measurement. So we start with the random variables. Here we say a random variable is represent a numerical value associated with each outcome of a probability distribution. So here we generate term a random variable is represent a numeric value associated with each outcome of a probability distribution. So a very simple example would be, let's say Delta Airlines have 20 total flights, 20 flights from JFK to London. Now we can say what is the probability that 15 of these flights will arrive in time. So in this case, 15 will be a random variable. By here, 15 is counting. We are counting the number of planes that will arrive in time. So 15 will be a discrete random variable. So in our textbook, the random variable is denoted by the letter X, lowercase x. So an example here will be, Number of sales calls a salesperson makes in one day. So you will say the number of sales calls. So this will be a discrete random variable. So number of sales calls a salesperson makes in one day. Hours spent on sales call in one day. Hours spent on sales calls in one day. So now we move to the more specific. Now, in general, we, we know what is a random variable. Now, what is a discrete random variable? As we said earlier, it's based on counting. So here we say it has a finite or countable number of possible outcomes that can be listed. Most of the time, discrete random variable values are whole numbers, whole numbers. We cannot say 20.4 patients or 20.3 planes or 1.2 trains, we can't. So it's always a whole number. And also the whole concept is that discrete is based on counting. So discrete random variable has a finite or countable number of possible outcome that can be listed. So this is an example. Here we say X again equal to number of sales calls a sales person make in one day. So we are counting the number of sales calls. Is it zero, one, two, three, four, or five? Then next we go to the continuous random variable. Now continuous random variable is based on measurement. So here we see it has uncountable normal possible outcome represented by an interval on the number line. So um, example would be we can have a weight that is 20.7892 kilogram. 
So it's an uncountable non possible outcome and uh, represent by an interval. So example, hours spent on a sales course in one day. So let's go detail with a random variables example. Here they say we should decide whether the random variable X is a discrete or continuous. Now we should only focus discrete counting, continuous, non-countable or measurement. So here the first question says the number of stocks in the Dow Jones Industrial Average that have share price increases on a given day. The keyword is the number of stocks. So this will be discrete. We are counting the number of stocks. So here we say it's a discrete random variable. The number of stocks whose share price increases can be counted. Again, discrete always based on counting. Now let's see the other example. The volume of a water in a 32 ounce container. There's no way we can count uh, the volume of a water in a container. We can't count it. But we can know the weight. Actually, they gave us 32 ounce container. So this is based on measurement weight. So here to be continuous random variable. The amount of water can be any volume between zero ounce to 32 ounces because the volume of the container is up to 32 ounces. So if there's no water in the container, it's zero ounces. If the container is full, no space, that means it reached 32 ounces. So continuous random variable again is based on measurement. Now we move to the discrete probability distribution. So here we say we list each possible value the random variable can assume together with its probability. And this is the concept of probability mass function. And we'll see an example soon. So in words, we say the probability of each value of the discrete random variable is between zero and one inclusive inclusive means the zero is included the probability of something be zero that means we are 100 percent sure it will not occur probability that something being one we are 100 percent sure it will occur so the probability of each value of a discrete random variable is always between zero and one including the zero and one and also the sum of all the probabilities is always one. So if, for example, we have a, a car sales company that sells a car and they have three different colors of a car, yellow, blue, and green. And they say the probability of selling yellow car is 0 0.5. The probability of selling blue car is 0 0.3. Then the probability of selling the green should, should yes, we have three colors should be 0.2 so that the total will be one. So always the sum of all the probabilities is always one. So here we are going to construct a discrete probability distribution. First thing they say we should let X be our discrete random variable with possible outcome. So let's say if we have probability of uh, having five patients to visit a hospital. There's a possible, since the total is five, there's possibility that none of the patient will vi visit. So what's the probability that zero patient will visit? What is the probability that only one, two, or three, or four, or five will visit? Now what's the probability that six will visit? No, the maximum patients we have is, we have only five patients. So the probability will be from zero to five. There's no six. So that's the concept here. So here we say, okay, let S be the discrete random variable with possible outcomes. The outcomes can be S1, S2, up to Sn, based on S value. Now we have to make a frequency distribution for the possible outcome. So S1 is three, 
its probability distribution is 0.2. S2 is 10, probability of its distribution is 0.6. And we keep going, but if you remember the second rule, we said the sum of all the probability should be one, not less, not more, exactly one. So first we'll make a frequency distribution for the possible outcomes, how many outcomes we have. We are selling four cars. What's the probability that we're going to sell only one or zero or three or two or four, all of them? So if my S value is three, then I have a possible probability of zero, one, two, up to three. I can't go four because maximum is three. So here we find the sum of the frequencies, then find the probability of each possible outcome by define, dividing its frequency by the sum of the frequencies. This is the concept of relative frequency then check that each probability is between zero and one. And most important, again, the sum is always one. So we'll see an example here. So here they say an industrial psychologist administered a personality inventory test for passive aggressive traits to 150 employees. Individuals were given a score between one to five where one is extremely passive and five is extremely aggressive. A score of three indicated neither trait. So construct a probability distribution for the random variable S, then graph the distribution using a histogram. So here the probability distribution is almost the same again as frequency distribution. So here we can see the scores, how many times they appear. The total here should give us 150. So score of one, we have 24 of them. Two, we have 33. Three, we have 42. Four, we have 30. Five, we have 21. So next, we're going to find the concept again, the same as relative frequency. It's the same, same as frequency and distribution. So next, we're going to find the, I will use the term relative frequency here. Or here we say individual probability based on the outcome. So remember we have, uh, let's go back how many maximum we have. The scores are between one to five. So there's probability that one, probability of two, three, four, five. There is no probability of zero or six or seven because they told us in the question, individuals were given a score between one to five. So what's the probability of one up to five? So that's what we did here. We look again, the total is 150. How many ones we have? 24. So 24 over 150 gives us the probability that the score will be one is 0.16. Again, it's the same as finding the relative frequency. Probability of two is 33, so 33 over 150. Probability of three is 42 of them, so 42 over 150. Probability of four is 30. Based on the table here, we can see. Probability of four is 30. Probability of five is 21, so it will be 21 over 150. Then probability of four will be 30 over 150. And that's what we have here. So this will be our values in the third column, or in this case, we can just have the two. So we know the scores are from one to five. We saw each probability. Now we can construct this. So again, this is the valid discrete probability distribution. Since each probability is again between zero to one. And also when you had all, you get one. So as we said, this is the two rules, very important. The probability, this is a, a whole test. The scores are between one to five. We have 150. We saw their score tests. We find the probability that only one, the probability that only one is the number of one scores we have divided by the total. Same thing, probability of two will be the number of scores we have for two 
divided by the total. So after, at the end, we we'll check these two rules if it works. All the probabilities value should be between zero to one. And the total probability should be one. And that's what we check here, it was correct. It was correct here also. So next we can construct. So in the frequency distribution, the frequency is our vertical values. But in probability distribution, the probability will be our vertical values. And our vera in this case is score will be our horizontal, which is the X as is. So we can see probability of one, we saw it was like 0.1 something, 0.15, actually 0.16. Probability of two is 0.22, so 0.22 should go up a little bit. Probability of again three is, uh, three is 0.28, actually that's the largest probability. So we can see that three will be tallest, but then we write down the probability of four, somewhere around 0.2. Probability of five in five scores will be somewhere around 0.13 or 1.2. Uh, it's 1.4. So 0.14. So this is how we construct our probability distribution, more or less to histogram. So first of all, we have our uh, random variable category. Here is based on again score between one to five. Then we count how many students or how many people have one, two, three, four, five. We write it down, then we can find the probability that the score is one, which will be how many we have in one divided by the total. How many we have in two, uh, two scores divided by the total to the end. So next we move to the mean. Uh, now, the formula is a little bit different. To find the mean of a discrete probability distribution, it will be the random variable times its probability. Then we had all. So for example, in this question here, if I want to find the mean, it will be one times 0.16 plus two times 0.22 plus three times 0.28 plus four times 0 0.20, plus five times 0.14. Then we had all the answers together. And that will give us the mean. So that's what we say here. The sum of the random variable x times its probability p at x. So each value of x will be multiplied by its corresponding probability. And then the products are added together. So let's see this example. Actually, it's the same example of the scores from one to five and their probability. We were able to find this probability because we know how many employees score one, two, three, four, five. So the number of ones divided by the total, which is 150, will give me 0.16. The number of score two divided by the total will give me a probability of two, which will be 0.22. Then we keep going. Now, if they say we should find the mean of this data, I will multiply one times 0.16 plus two times 0.22 plus three times 0.28 plus four times 0.20 plus five times 0.14. Because we know the formula said the sum of x times probability of x. X is our random variable. Probability of x will be our probability distribution for the random variable. So that's what we have here. One times 0.16, two times 0.22, three times 0.28, four times 0.20, five times 0.14. Then we had all the value, we get 2.94. So 2.94 will be our mean. Now, if I want to find the variance, I will subtract the mean from each random variable. We square it, then we multiply by the probability of it. Now, if I want to find the standard deviation, then it will be square root of the variance. Again, variance is like finding the sum square difference or sum, sum of square difference. Uh, 
x minus mu. If I have four values, then it will be s1 minus mu all squared times prob its probability. s2 minus mu all squared times its probability. So the constant is right here again. You can see from one to five, each value or random variable value have different probability. So since I know the mean is point 2.94, I will subtract 2.94 from, again, 2.94 is the mean. Subtract 2.94 from 1, square it and multiply by probability of x. 2.94 minus uh, from 2, square it, then multiply by its probability. And that's the formula here. The x value minus mean all square times its probability. To find the standard deviation, you get square root of everything. So here, the same example, we already find the mean to be 2.94. So this time we are going to subtract the mean from each value, from one, two, three, four, five. And this is the answer we get. Now, if you add all this together, we get zero. That's why we square it. So we square it, and now we, we move on. The reason why it will be zero, because you can see that some of the values are negative some of the values are positive so here we square everything so that all the values will be positive then we can add all together so now we find the s minus mu all square then we multiply it with probability of x then we add all together so our answer will be 1.616 now, to find the standard deviation, we just find the square root of the variance, which will give us 1.3. So next is how to find the expected value. As we said earlier, expected value is the same as the mean. So you can see that here, expected value, e at x is the same equal to mu, which is the same as the sum of s times p at x the same. So here we have a question now saying that we have a raffle and this raffle have 1,500 1, tickets that are sold at $2 each for four prices. The prices are 500, 250, 150, and 75. You buy one ticket. What is the expected value of your gain? So here we know the total is 1,500 and each are sold for $2. Each for the prices of these three and uh, four prices, 500 to 50. You buy one ticket, what's the expected value of your gain? So first thing we know is that our gain for the 500 price will be 500 minus two because $2 I bought the ticket. 250 minus two, 150 minus two, 75 minus two. The reason why we subtract again the two, and we can see from here that we search around four thousand are sold and are sold at two dollars each for four hundred for sorry for four prices. So each ticket is two dollars. Each ticket is two dollars. So and again, if I win five hundred. My gain will be 498. If I win 250, my gain will be 248. If I win 150, my gain, because I'll subtract the price that I bought the ticket, which is $2. The next step, if you do not win a price, what would be my gain? My gain will be negative 2 because it will, I didn't win no price, so 0 minus 2, which means I lost $2, negative 2. So now we have our values now, all the possible outcome for X. 498, 248, 148, 73. If I didn't win, then it's negative two. So each of these values will be probability will be one over 1,500. But because only one person will win, by the losing, we subtract, the total 1,500, we subtract four from it because the 
four other possible units. So that's why 1496 by 1500 will be the probability of losing. So if we know this, then we can find a expected value. 498 multiplied by 1 by 1500 plus 248 multiplied by 1 by 1500 plus 148 multiplied by 1 by 1500 plus 73 multiplied by 1 by 1500. Then last one plus negative 2 multiplied by 1496 over 1500. So when we do this calculation finish, we get negative 1.35, which means I can, my average or I can expect to lose an average of $1.35 for each ticket I buy. So this will be the summary of the concept of, again, discrete random variables and also continuous random variables. We also learn the whole concept of uh, how to find the mean, the variance, and the standard deviation for, again, discrete probability distribution. And we saw the formulas, again, they are totally different from discrete statistics. So again, wish everybody the best and see you in our next lectures, which we will cover binomial probability distribution. Binomial probability distribution is a discrete probability distribution because this random variable is based on, again, counting. So again, wish everybody the best. Thank you.